Hi, everyone. How are you? Happy hour. Great. Doing great. It's kicked in. It's great to be here. Well, uh, uh, thanks, thanks so much uh, for the great introduction here. I know we're all getting used to virtual conferences, um, but we're, we're really excited today because I get to uh, introduce a friend of ours, a robotic friend, and uh, show you something that maybe you haven't seen other than on YouTube uh, or in your nightmares. It depends on which, which you're, you're thinking. Um, we're going to show you Spot, uh, the advanced uh, quadrupedal robot from Boston Dynamics. And we're going to take you on a little tour. Uh, but first, I, I wanted to just see uh, maybe a show of hands. Did anybody catch um, Daniel Bruce uh, and his session yesterday on getting business value out of AI and advanced sure. robotics? Any show of hands or anything? Cool. A few, sure. a few folks. Sure. So Daniel uh, is, is our head of uh, um, our CTO of our AI product and platform at Levitas. And um, he had a chance to walk everybody through how we put AI and advanced robotics to work. Uh, at our uh, kind of global 500, Fortune 500 uh, customers. So it's kind of a uh, uh, less research and, and thinking about the possibilities of AI, but really putting it to work uh, for our business customers. Um, and I'm getting a little bit of feedback. I don't know if Ivan, I hear you. How are you, Ivan? I'm gonna put you, I don't know if I can put Ivan on mute. Ivan, can I put you on mute? Can you put you on mute? Uh, Chris, you put yourself on mute. Was trying to uh, uh, work it out there. Hopefully everybody can hear me now. Yeah, I can um, hear you. That's great. Thanks. So just a quick minute on Levitas and who we are uh, before we get into our demo. Um, uh, we're an emerging technology consultancy. We specifically focus in the field of AI and uh, to even further refine that a little bit, um, specifically machine perception, so natural language processing and computer vision. As you're going to see, and we're going to do a little Q&A and a demo, Spot is a great tool, um, but Spot is one of the many technologies that we get to work with every day at Levitas. Um, advanced robotics is an exciting part of our world, uh, but we're also hands-on with drone technology, uh, fixed camera networks, advanced industrial IoT. Uh, so there's a whole world um, uh, that we get to work with and bring our AI solutions to life uh, using. So, uh, but Spot is, is definitely kind of the, the friendliest and possibly the most popular uh, of the tools that we get to work with here at Levitas. So we're South Florida based. And in fact, we're in South Florida right now, so we made the, the very correct decision to film this demo just a couple days ago while the sun was shining, because today we're in the middle of three tropical depressions swirling around out there and, uh, and it's pouring. So good news, we've got a demo with some bright sun where we brought Spot outside. And um, so I'm gonna click play on that video, I'm gonna share my screen, and then after, uh, we're gonna flip back to an interactive Q&A format, and we've got our Spot unit here, and if you wanna tell, uh, spot to do something or walk around or ask questions we're going to be able to do that so okay so let me uh, roll this uh, roll this demo here structured environments. Basically, that means outdoor setting. As you can see, he handles stairs, no problem. And is at home working, walking on surfaces like concrete, nice like this. But it's also great with gravel, grass, anything you can throw at him. We're heading over to Steam Horse Brewery here in West Palm Beach. about Spot is his obstacle detection. So what you're seeing is he knows not to walk into or to try to climb uh, this embankment. Now, that's a setting that you can throttle up and down or you can turn off for certain instances. 
spots also great uh, at, at being aware of his settings so we'll, uh, and, and his surroundings. So what you'll see here is he's going to transition with no problem onto gravel. And just as easily, he can head over into the grass. Spot's going to take a trip up the stairs here. No problem. And head right down. He's self-stabilizing along the entire way. He's constantly looking for level ground and stability. He's great at being able to walk over things that a, a traditional wheeled robot might have trouble with. With no problems. So this, this really makes him great in environments that, that have uh, unforeseen objects in the way, different types of terrain, possibly even vegetation like grass or other foliage. Uh, he's really built to be a, a tough uh, robot for unstructured environments. And here we'll take a second just to show you that he's got a couple different gates. When I say gates, it's, it's ways of walking, it's high stepping, he can raise and lower himself. What you may have seen on YouTube was uh, this uh, set to music to Bruno Mars. And while that's funny, it actually has a real functional purpose. It allows him to go through short grass, tall foliage, um, and adjust his gait so that he's stable throughout. Again, one of the reasons he's great in outdoor, unstructured environments. Well, we're late for happy hours, so why don't we head on over? operations. What you'll see back here is spots great for industrial applications like automated inspections, analog gauge reading. He can be remoted into, but can also run on fully autonomous missions that allow him to be really, really efficient. What you're seeing here is the ability for a uh, spot to be set on an autonomous mission around a plant, a facility, a factory, oil and gas fields, you name it, uh, checking at different inspection points along the way to look for anomalies. He's then able, because he has onboard Wi-Fi and network connectivity, able to flag those anomalies to, uh, to anyone that's appropriate. So whether that's a human in the loop that's perhaps a quality manager or a safety manager or uh, some types of maintenance and operations team, he's able to report back his findings. One of the exciting things that you may have heard Daniel Bruce talk about earlier uh, is our analog gauge detection model. So we trained an intelligence model that works with Spot to be able to read and interpret and react to analog gauges that might be otherwise too expensive to replace with digital equipment. Well, hey, now that you've seen some of what Spot can do, time for a happy hour. Let's go. That's new Spot. Everyone able to get a, a look at Spot and follow along with the video? All right, I got my, my buddy here with me. And so we were going to do a little Q&A. Is anybody else enjoying a beverage? I, I heard this was a happy hour, so I've got mine. 
Well, that's great. So um, we're going to do it maybe half and half. If you want to drop a question into the chat, you're welcome to. Um, if you want to unmute and come up and, and uh, just ask a question, that's great as well. Um, and we have two questions in the uh, chat already. Uh, before that, I actually want to bring over our chief technology officer, Brian Dunham. He's going to join me. Hey, Brian, come on over. So Hello. what you what you see, what, what appears to be very magical is actually, in fact, Brian directing spot using the controller. So before we get into some of the specific questions, maybe this, this covers off on some of it. Um, but uh, Spot can be controlled manually using a controller a device. It looks very much like a modern gaming tablet. Um, uh, he can also be controlled through the API uh, provided to us by Boston Dynamics. There's a lot of really cool functionality we can do there. And then, of course, the third um, kind of exciting uh, capability that Spot has is autonomous missions, where you can program him, basically, to, uh, uh, to walk uh, any mission that you create. Uh, with inspection points or action points or tasks along the way. And um, uh, he can execute uh, anomaly detection. He can look for behavioral detection, uh, behavioral anomalies, um, and report back uh, to kind of the, the humans in the loop uh, via our, our AI platform, Vinsa. So with that said, and with Brian uh, here, who knows a lot more about Spot and the inner workings than I do, we'll get to some questions. So, so how long does the battery last? Yeah. So there, uh, there's a question about battery runtime. Uh, how long does the battery last? Uh, runtime is about 90 minutes. Uh, standby time is roughly uh, two hours, uh, 180 minutes. Uh, and then it takes uh, about two hours to charge the battery. Um, it's, a, it's a lithium ion battery. So um, we have customers all over the country and in fact, all over the world. So shipping spot becomes a problem. Uh, the, the robotic unit itself is no problem. It's a little bit clunky. It's a large box container, uh, but the battery uh, is lithium ion. It's large. It can't be on commercial flights. It has to be shipped as dangerous goods. And every country has different regulations around how to ship dangerous goods. Uh, we had to get certifications uh, and uh, to be able to do that. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fun challenge shipping spot around from uh, state to state. Cool. Let's take another question. Um, how much of spot path is Program. Ah, for the demo that we just walked you through and did the video, that was all manual. So that was uh, Brian driving. Uh, uh, he's, he's gotten extremely comfortable with maneuvering spot. Believe it or not, everybody on this uh, Zoom could be trained to operate spot within just a few minutes. The training isn't so much about um, uh, moving the unit backwards and forwards and up and down. The, the training is about safety. It's about guidelines. It's about what to do if something goes wrong. Um, and how to handle the actual unit. Because even though Spot looks very friendly and, and, and warm and cuddly and you want a Spot unit in your house to bring you uh, a, a glass of water, it's not quite ready for that. Uh, this is an industrial robot. It's still, um, it doesn't, it's not aware of humans. It, it's aware of obstacles. But if you have your hand in the wrong spot, uh, uh, Spot has uh, pinch points and it can harm you. So um, believe it or not, it actually does take a, a while to get really good at driving, and Brian and several of our team have, have put in the time uh, to be really good at it. So hopefully uh, everybody here will be able to drive one at some point. Does Spot understand natural language or speech commands? It's a great uh, a question about natural language processing and speech commands. That's a very relevant question. In fact, we have just finished our first prototype of voice commands with Spot. Um, Spot comes out of the box with uh, navigational intelligence, um, a, a spatial, geospatial awareness, and of course, all of its uh, motor cortex ability to walk. What it doesn't come with is specific intelligence models, such as NLP, voice commands, uh, computer vision models, anomaly detection, or other IoT and sensors. Um, so the answer is yes, um, we do have it functionally working with voice commands, which is really fun. Um, and you can, of course, control uh, uh, forward, backward motion, up, down, different uh, styles of walking. But more importantly, you can command Spot using your voice to change from auto mission to auto mission. So if he happens to be on an inspection mission of critical infrastructure and he's looking for uh, unsafe conditions or leaks, but then he spots a security uh, risk or perhaps someone in a zone of the facility that's not supposed to be there, he can uh, he can do this autonomously and switch to that higher priority uh, need uh, and back. And he can, you can do that with voice commands through the API or with the controller. But the goal is to be as autonomous as possible. 
Uh, but yeah, voice commands are really exciting. How easily can it be combined with external hardware? Let's say pick and transfer or other sensors. Yeah, so this question um, uh, uh, is around other hardware uh, that can be added onto spot. Can you add hardware onto spot? The answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, there's a couple um, Boston Dynamics approved uh, pieces of hardware. Uh, so one of them is a, a PTZ camera. So it's a uh, you know, point tilt zoom camera. Uh, there's a, a, you know, a GPU hardware to be able to run uh, uh, things off of the back of spot. Um, the one that we're most excited about, which hasn't been released yet, uh, is the robotic arm or the mechanical arm. Because obviously uh, for the roboticists in the room, I mean, we've got, we've got this amazing piece of technology, but it's, it's primarily uh, for sensing um, using the cameras and, and, and other IoT sensors. Um, it's not necessarily uh, an actuator in terms of being able to then manipulate or do something about. It's more of a, report, a monitoring analysis and reporting tool. Um, but when the uh, mechanical arm comes out and you can actually do something about a dangerous condition or a security issue or an inspection related issue, turn the knob, um, uh, et cetera, that's when the value of spot is really going to uh, become exponential. So the answer is yes. Uh, we have customers putting all different types of IoT sensors on top of spot. Um, if, 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 if it's attachable and it meets his payload um, weight requirement and you can get it on there, we can put it on, on top of the spot unit. Yeah, just to go a little more in that there's there's rails on the top for mounting and then there's two connections where you can get you can power your own devices from the spot unit. Um, and then uh, right now it supports about 30 pounds of payload. Pretty cool. He's looking at you. Great. What else we got? That's good. There's heaps of questions in here. Johan. Uh, is actually jumping in and answering a lot of them as well. Awesome, um, thanks, Johan. Yep. Um, so there's a couple of questions about costs. I don't know if sure. you guys want to get into costs. Yeah, absolutely. There's um, anytime you're thinking about an advanced uh, uh, robotic strategy for your business, uh, you have to factor in the economics. And uh, Spot was initially offered last year to early adopters like Levitas uh, for a lease a lease um, per month program. Uh, it was five thousand dollars a month and you got it for six month chunks. Well now, recently, as you may have seen uh, in the public, they have announced the outright sale of spot units and it's no longer restricted to just a few early adopters like uh, AI solutions companies like us. Um, the average business and possibly even individual, if you'd like to, can, can purchase a spot unit. Um, they are $75,000 US per unit. And um, our understanding is that you do need to buy two units per order. Uh, that was the case for us. I don't know if that's actually still the, the, the rule, but we were, we were um, buying them two at a time. So 75 grand a pop, but you have to have $150,000 US in order to make it happen. Nice. Uh, how stable is it on um, you know, different types of surfaces and uneven environments? What happens if it falls over? Yeah, do? so Spot, believe it or not, is extremely capable in unstructured environments. In fact, that's the main differentiator between why you would want to use a spot unit uh, for your use case versus a wheeled robot or a drone or another type of sensor or camera. Um, spot's extremely versatile. Uh, dirt, gravel, grass, concrete, stairs. Uh, you saw all of that, but what's, what's kind of cool, spot is, spot is constantly stabilizing. And you can see, I'm not going to give him too hard of a, a kick, but he's, he's always going to self-adjust. Um, now, can you make him fall? That was the question. Absolutely, you can make this uh, you, just like what a human. When it falls? You can make him. Yeah, you can make him fall, and just like a human, when pushed to the point of uh, tipping, we what do we do? We stutter step. You know, kind of we stagger. Spot does the exact same thing. Uh, his feet, his legs are constantly trying to find the most stable position. Um, so. One of the safety guidelines around operating a spot unit is that uh, you're, when, when operating, you're supposed to stay um, a, a six, uh, a six uh, foot um, uh, uh, diameter around the unit because if he tips and falls, he can stagger and the, the fall uh, plane is, is about three feet in either direction. So yes, you can make spot fall. He does stagger and that's actually possibly one of the more dangerous things about the uh, being near the unit. Um, it doesn't happen often. Uh, we have seen it happen. Yeah, and when he does fall, it's usually, um, you know, he shuts himself off 
uh, or, or, or stops, and then you can clear the fault, uh, basically get him in a stable position and just reset him and, and keep moving. Cool. Is that a, uh, is if he's taking readings on something, is that increased or? or? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so his, he, we're always concerned with his stability, right? So um, a, a, in the demo, you saw him going up and down and you saw him changing his gates uh, the, way, the way he was walking. Um, it doesn't necessarily change when he's sensing per se. It, what matters really is the weight of the payload on top of him that, caught with, that would cause his stability to decrease. So spot is more stable when he's lower. So actually, if you want to stagger him this way a little bit, we'll show you, um, we'll show you kind of some of his settings. So uh, you can raise and lower spot. Uh, and of course, this is manual. So um, you can all, obviously also make him do this automatically. Um, when he's lower, he's more stable. But when he's lower, he also walks slower. He can't, he can't move as fast. Now, when he's very high, uh, uh, he can move fast. Uh, but he's less stable. So it's all a trade-off of weight and, and, and what you need him to do. So ho and, hopefully that. And when you have a payload, uh, you have to actually calibrate the robot for the weight of the, of the payload. He has a little admin console that you can go in and, and calibrate him to what the payload is. Yeah. Someone said, Chris, can you sit on it? <laughs> oh, I can sit on it, but I won't. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how much time we've got left. Sure. Uh, Johan's answered some questions about top speed. Cool. Um, can the robot uh, be used for medical purposes, such yeah. as walking? So, uh, yeah, so if the, if the um, medical use, if, it's, if you're talking about ambulatory support, that, that would not be a use case for SPOT at this point in time. Um, helping it, a patient to walk. Yeah, helping a patient to walk, kind of like, you know, uh, that, that's not currently uh, what it would be used for. Uh, but there are other medical use cases that it is being used for. In fact, Boston Dynamics deployed a, um, a COVID-19 thermal detection model uh, with a camera, a thermal camera rig on top of spot at the um, Massachusetts hospital. I forget which one, I apologize. Um, and it was scanning patients as they were entering into critical areas. So, so yes, can be used for medical purposes, but not, um, uh, uh, not, help, not assisting in, in uh, walking. So Michael has says, curious on some of the real world applications uh, that spot is being used against, not necessarily having to listen to your customers, but curious yeah. on what your team is seeing day in, day out. Yeah, so real world applications for Spot. Um, this is what we do. This is what we do all day, every day is Spot can't just be a really expensive remote control robot or a remote control toy. It has to uh, generate business value. And that was really the thrust of uh, Daniel Bruce's talk at the conference yesterday. Um, so some of the, uh, the use cases um, are, are to inspect. So in, uh, automatic inspections. Now that might not sound very glamorous or very important why we need a robot. Well, there's a huge cost when you're putting humans in into positions of possible dangerous inspection routes. So some of our customers operate uh, oil and gas facilities. They operate nuclear uh, facilities that uh, electrical grids. It's actually very dangerous to put humans in those positions. They have to be highly trained and, and comply with all the regulations. Well, if you can take the human out of that loop, and by the way, we're in no way suggesting that this, this is a tool to eliminate jobs. That's not what's happening. You introduce spot to increase efficiency, increase productivity, increase safety, and then those humans who have a lot of knowledge built up, institutional knowledge, can be put towards more valuable, higher impact uh, roles within their organization. We're, we're in no way uh, introducing spot in order to just replace humans. Uh, so they do have real world function. Another um, thermal anomalies is really important to be able to know if a, a piece of equipment or a pipe is too hot or too cold. Um, oftentimes you don't know that until it's way too late and facilities managers uh, then have to scramble and replace those, uh, those pieces of equipment, but they could have known uh, that they were operating outside of normal uh, thresholds. So thermal anomalies is another one. Uh, security use cases, you know, intrusion detection, anomaly, you know, door left open. Uh, type of stuff, hole in the fence, uh, computer vision use cases. Um, and again, uh, we, we at Levitas have just uh, recently finished our, uh, uh, an analog gauge reading uh, 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 model, which is you know, for the purpose of uh, uh, interpreting, uh, analyzing, and reacting to analog gauges. Some facilities have literally tens of thousands of gauges that are too, 
too costly to put a digital one there. So Spot is a great solution to be able to go around and effectively digitize and respond to analog gauges. So um, th those are just a handful of the real world use cases and there's more of them popping up onto the radar with every customer we talk to. So this is a good question and it's connected to what you were just talking about is what is the added value for Xiaomi and what's the help bring to the tools that have the box version of Spot? Ah, that's a great point. Why, why, if Spot is so cool, why would you need a, um, a partner, an AI solutions partner like Levitas? It's a, it's a great question. Out of the box, Spot does not know your niche industry use case. So let's just say you are a construction firm that puts up towers um, uh, all over the world. Well, you have, a, you have a problem where you need scale and you need maybe a safe, safety solution. Well, guess what? Sp uh, Boston Dynamics are the best in the world, the leaders in mobility platforms and robotics. They are not out to solve everybody's software use case. And, and we are, we are an uh, uh, AI um, uh, focused firm. So we are out in the field with our customers building out their specific computer vision models, their NLP models, their predictive analytics models, and sometimes marrying them with spot, sometimes with drones, sometimes with networks, and sometimes just using the, the data from our customers. So um, hopefully, hopefully that kind of uh, answers the question a little bit. Great. Yeah, there's some others, Johan's uh, answers yeah, if you didn't know the uh, the the AI head of AI answering your questions in the in the chat is is our is, is our chief AI officer. So Johan, thank you for pulling double duty there. Um, so you're getting good you're getting good content. Uh, he's not just a peanut gallery. Yeah, <laughs> great. But um, yeah, so I did anybody if if um, if we didn't I know we're we're about out of time here. So uh, did anybody want to? Ask any questions before we before we head into the happy hour. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, this was really fun for us. Um, we also, and I'll, I'll end with just a little a little pitch. If you are with an organization who's interested in exploring use cases with Spot, um, this that's exactly what we do, and we make Spot available. So it's not really a sales pitch. It's more of a this is this is what we love to do, and if if you have any interest in pe speaking with us afterwards, please don't hesitate to reach out, even if it's just a question about how it works or how we do what we do. So, really appreciate everyone's time, and uh, look forward to meeting some of you. So, thanks again. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Spot is amazing, and now I kind of want to hang out with Spot. Absolutely. <laughs> Hi, Spot. <laughs> so thank you to Chris and the whole Levitas crew for making this happen.